So in this uh, lesson today, we're going to discover the four types of quadrilaterals. And we're going to classify those quadrilaterals um, as uh, either a rectangle rhombus, a square, or a parallelogram based on their properties, OK? So um, first question I have here is, what do you notice? Um, I notice that this looks to me like a rectangle. This looks like a square. Not quite sure what that is. We're going to talk about that shape in this one. I also noticed that this got these marks on the sides that are different. Um, we call these tick marks, okay? Um, and then we call these tick marks. Uh, and then notice these arcs. Those speak of angles. Oh, over here I had right angles, right? You guys should have seen those before. Right angles, right angle, right angle, right? Um, we have these arcs that has speaks of congruence in angles, okay? And then some similar, oh, when, then we have these arrows on these sides. These mean that these sides are parallel, and AB and DC down here are parallel, okay? And then over here, I think we've already talked about everything that we see there, only the difference is there's a right angle in the center there, okay? So those are some things I notice. So then, um, and I also wonder, what do these things have to do with these shapes, okay? So the first thing we're going to, the first shape we're going to look at is a parallelogram, and it, we're going to use patty paper in class to trace parts of these shapes to identify the properties about the parallelograms. Because the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this this bottom um, down here, this bottom part of this parallelogram. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to see um, if indeed it is parallel. So I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to bring it right up here and look at that. It is parallel. Um, and it's also the same length, right? So that means it's also equal. Now let's compare the sides over here, okay? So that's this side over here. And once again, if I grab it and I pick it up and I drag it over to here, then it is also parallel and it is congruent, isn't it? Okay, so that's what we're going to do with our patty paper in class as well. So opposite sides are both parallel and equal. I keep using that word congruent because I'm used to using it, but congruent and equal mean the same thing essentially. All right, then it says opposite angles are. Okay, so when we're talking about opposite angles, um, we're talking about this angle here and this angle down here. And we want to see if there's any kind of relationship that these angles have. So once again, I'm going to take this angle that I just drew up here, and I'm going to see if I can flip it. So I drug it up here, and now I'm going to see if I can turn it and see if it is indeed the same angle. Well, this is not cooperating. It is. Look at that. It's this basically essentially the same angle that's there, isn't it? Mm hmm It is. Okay. So that we know opposite that opposite this angle and this angle are congruent, are equal, right? Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other one, this one right here. And this time I'm just going to grab this one. Okay. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to rotate it. And we're going to see again if it's equal to this angle down here. And it is. Okay. So opposite angles are equal. Then consecutive angles, it says, are, and what is this blank? So let's look at this. Let's see if we can put together a pair of these consecutive angles and see what they form. So I'm going to turn this one and look at that. Um, what happens is those two angles form a line, don't they? Well, consecutive angles are then the term that we're going to use to describe this are supplementary. And supplementary means that when we add them together, they are 180 degrees supplementary. That means they add up to be 180 degrees. All right, and then diagonals. What happens with the diagonals in this drawing? A diagonal goes from one angle to the opposite angle and from one angle to the opposite angle. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw from here to the center. And we're going to pick that up and we're going to see what we see with it. We're going to pick it up and put it up here. And what do you notice? It's the same length. Well, if I'd drawn it straight, it would be the same length. And we'll try that with the other one and see if it works out better. Um, but that's what you're going to see is that they bisect each other. Okay. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to try it with the other one. Maybe I drew that one straighter. Let's try that again. 
and if I'd done this with a straight edge, we would see it better. Okay, so I'm going to pick this up, same thing, take it and put it down here. See, I didn't draw it very straight. That's my problem. But it would have, they would have bisected each other. Okay, so diagonals bisect each other. Okay, so these are our properties of parallelograms that we need to commit to memory. Now I'm going to show you what these look like. Whoops, on here. Um, with those tick marks and that stuff. Okay, so basically we have that opposite sides are parallel. So this side is parallel to this side and this side, the horizontal sides are parallel to each other too. So I put one ar one arrow on um, the two sides that are sort of vertical and two arrows on the sides that are sort of horizontal or they are horizontal. Okay, then also we're going to put some tick marks on these sides. So we know that this side is congruent with that side or equal to that side and these two horizontal sides are also equal. We just did that, right? Um, supplementary has to do with angles, right? Okay, and then the diagonals, we said bisected each other, right? So we're going to, let me see if I can do this with a straight edge this time. So that means this part right here is equal to this part right there. And then this part is equal to that part because that means this center point right here bisects each of them. Okay. All right. Now, all the properties that we just talked about, about parallelograms, are true of a rectangle, a rhombus, and a square. Okay, so um, that's the first thing. And then it says all the parallelogram properties apply to a rectangle. And then what do we know about um, all the angles in a rectangle? I think you guys know this when they're all what kind of angles? Right angles, right? You guys should have learned this before me. So these are all right angles. Okay, and then the diagonals in a rectangle have this really cool property. They are the same length. So I'm going to draw one right here and I'm going to show you that by picking it up and moving it. Okay, so there's our diagonal. Um, we're going to grab it and we're going to rotate it right there. See that? Look at that. So that diagonal is the same length. Um, for both. So um, what I'm going to do is draw another one. Um, but this is one of our properties. The diagonals in a rectangle are the same length. Okay. So diagonals are equal in a rectangle. Okay. So then we're going to go on to this next shape, which is called a rhombus. Now a rhombus again has all the properties of the parallelogram that we talked about about a minute ago. But one of the other properties of a rhombus is, is that all sides are equal. So once again, what we're going to do is we're going to um, take one of these sides and we're going to move it and see if it is equal on all four sides. Okay, so I'm going to pick it up. You guys are going to do this with patty paper in class. I'm going to turn it and let's see. Wow, look at that. It's equal there. And obviously, if that's equal there, then it's equal there. And I probably should have dropped, pulled it to the bottom before I started moving it um, the other way. But I'm going to go ahead and put it level right here. And we're going to bring it down here. So all four sides are equal. You guys see that? So we're going to put a mark there, a mark there, the same mark and the same mark this time because it says all four sides are equal, right? Okay. And then the diagonals. Um, Uh, do a couple things here. So let me show you the diagonals here. We're going to draw the two diagonals. Draw this diagonal right here. And we're going to draw this diagonal right here. And I don't know why it like doesn't like to draw that direction, y'all. I'm not sure why when I put my ruler there, it has trouble in that one spot. Okay. So I don't know if you can tell, but I'm just going to tell you because um, right, I don't have a tool that I can show you it with. But this angle right here is a right angle. That means all four of these angles are right angles. Okay. So the diagonals are perpendicular. And that means they form right angle. Okay. And they bisect these angles. Okay. So that means that this diagonal right here it cuts this this angle up here into two equal parts this angle into two equal parts and then over here 
same thing it cuts this angle into two equal parts and this these symbols mean these angles are congruent angles um, congruence is it are are the same are equal um, when I do that that means that this angle equals this one this angle equals that one that angle equals that one and that equal angles that one and if we cut an angle in half that's what happens right so it bisects the angles we won't need that property as much with this, but we need to know it. All right, then the last one is, guess what, a square. Now, what do we know about a square? You guys know several things about a square, right? Okay, so we're going to prove that right here, that this is a square. Oops. Wow, I'm having trouble, y'all. Let me do it in red. Okay, we're going to go from here to there. So to prove that this is a square, then we know that, again, this is the same length on all four sides, right? So take it to there. I'm going to turn it sideways, maybe, if I can get it to go. <laughs> Let's see. Yep, so same length there, same length there. So square has four sides that are equal. You guys already knew that. So all four of these sides, all sides equal, right? Um, and all angles are what kind of angles? Don't we have all right angles in a square? Mm-hmm, you're right. You guys knew that as well, right? Um, and then the diagonals, because a square is both a rhombus and a rectangle, there's a couple properties that apply to the diagonals. So I'm going to draw the diagonal here. And I'm going to draw a diagonal here. And again, keeping in mind that a square is both a rectangle and a rhombus, has four right angles. That's what defines it. It's a rectangle. And it's a rhombus because it has four congruent sides. So that means we have that these, there's the diagonals are perpendicular and they are the same length. Okay. Um, so once again, I could take one of these. I'll take this one because I think I drew it better. Turn it. Notice it is the same length, right? So they are the same length. So the diagonals are equal. And perpendicular. Now the key here is when we talk about um, a square, every single property of every uh, shape that we've done prior to this applies to a square. All of them do. Okay. All right. Here's our example. Um, we're going to identify what shape this is based on the properties. So what would you predict this is? A rectangle, right? So here I need you to understand. Now we could do this a couple ways. We could um, compare the opposite sides, see if they're the same length. We, we, we could do that for sure. But the quickest way to determine if this is a rectangle is to compare the diagonals. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And then we're going to work backwards from there. Okay, so I'm going to compare the diagonals here. This one, whoops, well, I don't know what happened there. Wow. Okay, let me pause. So we're going to take this like we did before. All right, now the way I'm going to determine whether these are the same length or not, we're going to look at AC and then we're going to look at DB. Okay, so AC we're going to go rise over run. Okay, so it's rising from left to right. So we know it's going to be positive. So we're going to count uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is going to be equal to the square root of 7 squared plus 1 over 1 squared. Right? Okay, so that's going to be 49 plus 1. That's going to be the square root of 50. Okay, now we're going to look at the other one. So now we're going to look at uh, db, okay, db, and this one is going to be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that was 5 tall, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 wide, y'all see that? So this is going to be the square root of 5 squared, which is 25 plus 5 squared. That's 25. So that is also the square root of 50. So now, because AC is equal to DB, that is the one unique property to a rectangle, right? So now we could have proved that the side lengths were the same, opposite sides were the same, right? 
doing rise over run again. And if we did that, let's just talk about um, AB down here is one tall, three wide. This is one tall, three wide, right? So this would be a slope of one third, right? It's rising, okay? And then if we did the same thing with BC, and that would be right here, right? BC would be here. So we, um, if we go from C to B, and this one's falling from left to right. So CB is one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's negative six over two. And that would be negative three. Now, do you notice that negative three and one third are perpendicular slopes, right? So that would that would be what would have given us these right angles here, right? And I'll, again, over here, same thing. Um, with this side over here, we would have seen that this was, again, the same, right? It's falling 6, moving uh, 2 to the right. So those opposite sides would have been concurrent, and they would have, all four sides would have been perpendicular. But the quickest way to solve, to say that this is a rectangle, is that the diagonals are congruent, okay? Um, now on this one, um, it could be a parallelogram or it could be a rhombus, right? So let's count this right here, AB. If we count AB, um, which I already did, so I'm going to figure out what I counted it to be. Um, AB was 10 wide. Okay, so this is 10 wide and this is 10 wide. So if the length of AD and uh, CB or BC are both 10 as well, then I can say that this is a rhombus. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is eight tall. One, two, three, four, five, six, six wide. One, two, three, four, five, six wide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tall. Okay. So if we look at A, A, D, and B, C. Obviously, they're the same height and width, so we're going to say that's going to be equal to 8 squared plus 6 squared. That's 48 plus, no, sorry, not 48. What in the world? I'm losing my mind. 64 plus 36. 64 plus 36, and guess what that is? That's 100, so the square root of 100 is actually 10, right? So what does that mean? That means that AB is equal to BC is equal to CD is equal to AD. And that means all four sides are the same length, right? So this is a rhombus. Now there's one other property that we could have done here, and that's comparing the diagonals. So if we compare these diagonals, we compare this diagonal to this one right here, and they form a right angle, then we can say, again, for that reason, that it's rhombus, okay? So let's do that. Now let's count, um, let's do AC first. So AC is rising from left to right, so um, we're going to go over one, actually let's just count down, one, two, we know that's eight, right? That's already eight. So that's ten and six is sixteen, that was easy. So, um, so what would that slope be? So it was 8 up, 16 over, right? So the slope of AC, slope, we said was 8 over 16. That's equal to 1 half. Now, so what does that mean? That means if we compare the slope of DB to it in its positive or negative 2, then we know that these are perpendicular, right? So let's do that. So this is going down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this was down 8 over 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're talking about BD. And that's our slope again. We'll just say slope. I'll do tick marks here or whatever. Um, BD slope is equal to, we said it was 8 down, 4 over. And that's negative 2. So what does that tell us about AC? It's perpendicular to BD, right? Okay? And because that's true, we can say that this is a rhombus. Two properties here allowed us to say that. We could have just done um, either one of them, and it would have been enough for us to prove that it was a rhombus. All four sides are congruent, and the diagonals are perpendicular. Okay? So our next one looks like a square to me. So let's count the length of this. Um, so when we go up, it's 1, 2. We go to the right, it's 1, 2. We go down, 1, 2. Okay, so obviously all four sides here are congruent. 
we can tell that this got right angles, right? Okay, so we're going to say this one's a square. That one was pretty easy. Um, again, uh, if we were to talk about our diagonals, two up, two over, right? This one is. This one's two down, two over, right? So that would be the slope of two, one, and the slope of negative one. Um, so that, that one was a square. Okay, so that one was probably the easy one. Um, and, it, and we could also compare the slopes. One's vertical, one's horizontal, right? So this would be a slope of, one, of zero and a slope of undefined. And again, two over two for this, two up, two over, right? And the other one's two down, two over. Um, so that would be that would be positive one, negative one. Those are negative reciprocals of each other, okay? All right, so this last one is, um, I'm guessing a parallelogram, okay? But well, let's compare that. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven up, two over, okay? This one is... Uh, one, two over, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven up. So, yep, the slopes of those sides are the same. So, we could say that these two sides are parallel, right? And then, um, what can we say about the others? They're both horizontal, right? So, these are also parallel. We know that. So, then we're just comparing the length, right? So, if both, both of those opposite sides that are sort of vertical, a little slanted, but vertical, if it's 7 and 2, that's 7 squared plus 2 squared. That's going to be 49 plus 4. That's square root of 53 for this side and for the opposite side, right? So we could say that AD is equal to um, BC, right? And um, then this is 13 wide and this is 13 wide, right? So then we could say also AB is equal to... DC and we did already say that AB AD was parallel with BC right and that AB was parallel with DC so these two properties allow us to say that this is a parallelogram right now we would have only need, needed one honestly but um, to say that it's a parallelogram okay